Our nation's struggle with race and racism continues to be relevant. We have yet to create the society that Dr. Martin Luther King envisioned, one where we are not judged by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. To this day, discrimination, bullying, and racism impact our country on national, local, and individual levels. Reading to End Racism features interactive presentations led by volunteer readers that give students the opportunity to listen to literature, hear personal stories, and gain insights regarding racism. In addition, students brainstorm ways that they can work toward eliminating racism, standing up for other people, practicing inclusiveness, and learning about other cultures. Hello, I'm Meredith Reef. Thank you for attending today's training session. Reading to End Racism would not be possible without our volunteer readers who touch the lives of thousands of students each year. This training video will cover what you need to know to lead successful reading sessions in classrooms and facilitate helpful discussions with students to raise awareness of racism and ways we can promote greater equality. We'll cover the following topics. First of all, how to prepare for a successful reading. Second, reading your book and discussion tips. Third, interactive exercises for elementary school students. Four, tips for success. And finally, evaluations. Let's get started. Once you have connected with your YWCA staff regarding your upcoming reading, you'll want to plan in advance to ensure a successful session for your students. The first step is to select an appropriate book for your student age group. The YWCA will provide you with a suggested book list or feel free to select your own topic and age-appropriate literature. It's really important to contact your classroom's teacher and introduce yourself and advise them regarding your book selection. You'll want to choose a book that has not already been covered in class. When you talk or correspond with the instructor, find out their current curriculum that may relate to the reading topic. Also, ask if there are students with special needs in the class or other specific scenarios you should be aware of as you plan your presentation. Once you've pinned down your book choice and are sure that it's a good fit with the class, read the book thoroughly and prepare your thoughts on questions to pose to the students and some discussion points. The next step is to prepare a short personal story about yourself to share with the students during your introduction. Over time, volunteer readers have found their personal story to play an important role in successfully engaging with the class and capturing their attention. Your story can be about your own personal experience involving racism or bullying, or a time when you witnessed racism. You can also share a story about an instance where you served as an ally and spoke up when you saw someone being a victim of racism or bullying. Your story will help your students feel a connection with you and is an ideal way to launch an interactive and engaging session. Growing up in East Texas back in the 50s and 60s and early 70s, I was in a segregated schooling environment until my 10th grade in high school. That's when integration hit me for the first time. And being in the classroom with the children, they look at me different. They help me to see myself through different eyes that I didn't have at their age. And so it helps me to speed up in my own healing process and hopefully encourage that in other adults. I have been volunteering with RER for four years. One of the things that I do, um, I say, is anybody in the room prejudiced? Everybody looks at their feet, you know, no one says anything. And I say, well, I am. My husband and I used to ride motorcycles and we were at a rally and I parked my motorcycle and my husband couldn't find a spot to park so he said, I'll be back in a little bit. I sat down on a picnic bench and this man, he had to be, I know, at least 6'5 and 300 pounds and the do-rag and the dirty, you know, he'd been on the road. And I thought, oh my gosh, is he gonna sit down next to me? And he did. And I sat there and I was really afraid of him and in a minute or two he said, you know, it's really hot today, I'm gonna go get a soda. Could I get one for you? And I thought, well, that was really nice. I prejudged him. And the kid, oh, the kids love that story. After you prepare your personal story that you plan to share with the class, you'll also want to revisit the training material you received in today's volunteer training. Reacquaint yourself with the definitions, discussion points, exercises, and other topics to help you prepare for a positive reading session. 
time your presentation before going into the classroom. Reading sessions range from 30 to 60 minutes, depending on the grade level and teacher. Your introduction, personal story, and the reading of your book should last no more than 15 to 20 minutes. A sufficient amount of time should be allocated to student discussion and interaction. We have found the following methods for introducing yourself to your classroom helpful in establishing a safe, open environment for students to share and learn from you and one another. Begin by writing your name, the words, Reading to End Racism, and your book title on the board. Explain why it's important for you to help end racism and then share your personal story. Next, write definitions of key words on the chalkboard such as racism, prejudice, or prejudge, and ally. Refer to your training materials for definition suggestions. If you're reading to older students, let them know that you will pass out an evaluation form at the end of the session, which includes a section where they get to grade you. Many volunteer readers find it helpful to engage students in some interactive exercises, which serve as icebreakers, and can help foster greater discussion following the reading. Before reading your book, ask your students to listen for key things, such as when racism takes place in the story. Also ask them to listen for any allies in the story. If needed, remind them what an ally is. When reading your book to the class, please remember the reading should last no more than 10 minutes to maintain their attention and allow for plenty of time for discussion after sharing the book. During your reading, feel free to pause and ask some questions of the class. You might ask, what do you think will happen next? Or how do you think this character is feeling? Another question might be, what would you do in this situation? Upon completing your reading, the discussion part of your session will begin. You'll want to allow at least 20 minutes for this portion of the presentation. While students may begin sharing thoughts about the book, the goal is to steer the discussion towards students' thoughts, views, and experiences. One way to get students to open up is leading a group activity, such as the agree-disagree or pair-share exercises. Another way to get the discussion going is to ask questions among the group and encourage students to raise their hands with their responses. Some ideas for questions include, have you ever seen examples of racist behavior? Do you make friends who are culturally different from you? If not, how might you do that? Have you seen bullying occur? Did this story remind you of anything that has happened to you or to someone you know? If so, ask the student if they are comfortable sharing the story. If they are comfortable, ask how it made them feel and what could have been done differently. Sensitivity. Be ready if a student asks questions that are off topic, are very sensitive, or alternatively, lack sensitivity. Here are some tips to help you handle some of the trickier situations that can periodically occur during discussions with students. If a student asks a question you or others find offensive, stay calm and hold steady. View it as a teaching moment. Take the issue off the student who has made the offensive remark and put it on the table as a topic for general discussion. Say something like, many people think this way. Why do they hold such views? What are their reasons? And then why do those who disagree hold other views? The chance to have students start thinking about and discussing sensitive issues are great steps toward deepening their understanding of racism. Do not take any comments personally when they are on topics that you feel strongly about. It's important to remember that both you and the group will be better served if you can keep some distance from the comments and find ways to use them to enhance people's understanding. Here are brief reminders for what to do to ensure a successful reading. Be prepared. You'll want to be familiar with your book and have discussion points ready. Reach out to the teacher before your scheduled reading. You do not want to read a book that the class has already covered. Determine what you plan to cover as a personal story. That personal connection really makes a difference. In your reading session, it's best not to lecture or talk the entire time. The best readings involve a 30-70 split 
the presenter speaking 30% of the time and the students the remaining 70%. Your careful preparation, willingness to connect with students and ability to lead an interactive session will create a positive experience for the class. It's important to allocate three to five minutes at the end of your reading session to the evaluation process. If you're reading to students in grade three or above, you will receive evaluation forms to distribute to the class. Be prepared to read through the questions with students, especially your younger audiences. Encourage the class to fill out all questions as it helps the Reading to End Racism program continue to improve and help you as a volunteer reader to also continue improving. Thank them for their time and willingness to learn more about racism and ways we can help in eliminating racism in our society.